Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shana Park, your host from Money Talk. My guest today is Brandon Lavresco, and we will be going over part two of what we dis- of what we discussed last episode. Welcome to the show, Brandon. All right, thank you, Shana. It's so awesome to be back to continue our conversation to really kick off the new year. Yes, I'm glad that we can continue our conversation as well. But be- before we do so, could you please introduce yourself? My name is Brandon, and I've actually been a part of the financial industry for um, over eight years now. I actually started as a high school student interning, and when I went to college, I was learning about marketing, finance, and I was still working in the industry at the same time. And today, you know, I I am able to get full tuition to school, help other families be able to plan for college. But now I'm really proud to be helping other families look at retirement planning, debt management, and just making sure that we can really build a strong financial foundation for ourselves. Yes, I know you've been doing some amazing things in your career. And this brings out to our topic that we, you know, discussed last episode. So we had a great conversation about New Year's resolution. Could you share with us again, what are the most common goals um, amongst Americans? Yes, the first one is going to be number one, save for a rainy day. I think we all want to build that emergency fund to have that peace of mind. And number two is going to be that saving for retirement. You know, we want to invest and save for a long run, make sure that we can enjoy the lifestyle that we want and not be able to work for the money, but not maybe you're going to work just because you love it and you just do what you want to do at your own time. Um, And moving on to number three, Three is child schooling. You want to be able to save, prepare for that. Uh, whether it's tuition and looking at the best option. Um, reform, uh, save for a big purchase. And to end it off is paying off a credit card debt. And all five of those are very, very important. I know for myself and for you as well, this is something we constantly work on on a daily basis to attain and to make sure we can make happen. But would you mind sharing with us in particular a few goals you have in mind for this year? Yes, I, I think I, I think about this one goal that um, really is, a, I guess, really major right now because um, after one of our sessions doing some public workshops, uh, you know, I was able to go to my next event and I was driving to Blaisdell and I couldn't move my car. I was on, stuck on Ward Avenue. <laughs> So, you know, my car was there and I was, I was like, oh my gosh, what I got to do? I just, I called, uh, I called you, Shane, you know, and your family, you guys helped me out. He <laughs> just started my car and it, it just wasn't moving. And, and that leads to my first goal, which is making a big purchase, which is a car. And that's me seeing that, Hey, you know, that car, I have, it has been really reliable, but also there's times where I need to get a newer car and just be a little bit more, um, updated, safer, and, you know, that car was stuck there for a while. I actually just retrieved it this morning, uh, 3 a.m. I've got, <laughs> yeah, so, but my first car I actually want to get is a RAV4 hybrid. I want to be able to get something that is electric and I'm um, looking at me, you know, maybe the hybrid because of a plug-in hybrid, because not only you have that option, but also, you know, gas is still uh, pretty priced well enough for Hawaii, I would say, from the gas station that I'm looking at. Uh, But this also reminds me of your goal, too. You had one about purchasing your car. Could you share? I love hearing that story. Could you share with us that story again? I, it just brings me back to a time when um, it was probably three years ago or so. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I lived in Oregon for the past five years. I just recently moved back to Hawaii. But I was walking to my job and it was raining really, really hard. My glasses are fogging up. It was in its 40, 40 degree weather. And I just remember thinking, dang, I really need a car. I really, really need one. And Brandon, I really love that, you know, you, you have in mind what kind of car you want to get. Um, you know, the purpose of the car, why you want it. And That's really important in reaching your goals and achieving it because for me, I just knew, okay, 
I need a reliable car ASAP and I'll do anything to make it happen. And that's basically what I did. I, I went through the business, made enough money within the first few months and I just bought my car outright. It was definitely not brand new, but it was brand new to me and it lasted my whole time in Oregon, which I'm very grateful for. It was a great, reliable RAV4, 2006. So it was definitely not electric, but it did its job while I was there. And yeah, cars are very important. <laughs> <laughs> I know we come from a very, um, very great transit system. I would say like I always use the bus when I was in school, but um, there you, that also brings up an, a part of buying a car, you know, in our financial workshop, you talk about, hey, you don't have to buy the new car. You know, getting a older car, maybe a, a year or a few older, will be just as great because of the cost. You know, the cost depreciates once you buy a new one, walk out the lot. Um, but, you know, you can also look at other options. Let's say for even business owners like us, um, I'm also considering maybe leasing a car too. Yeah. That's... So there's different things like that. Yeah, definitely. I just... I just love how in any person's financial situation, it just has to make sense and do what makes sense for you, right? If if you're in a position to buy a car outright, I always suggest to do that. It's one last payment to be making. And if it's a good car that you find, just roll with it. I mean, I'm currently driving an 09 car. That's an upgrade for me because my car in Oregon was at 06. So, and it runs great. <laughs> But uh, Brandon, I know you have a few other goals that you want to achieve this year. So could you please uh, share what your other goals are? Uh, my second goal is to pay off some debt. One of the more major ones is even though I had, um, you know, full funding for our tuition, school is expensive. There's other things to consider. I was able to travel and study abroad and most of it was covered, but I still took out some loans. I took out about uh, under $10,000 in loans. And that's where I need to take time to make sure I do those payments because, you know, the the delay is gone, the forbearance, and now, you know, it's time for people to pay back their student loans. And this also comes to the idea of the loan forgiveness that I've been seeing popping up around. So I, I hope everyone can check that out if that works out for you. But just seeing that, hey, if I can attend the workshop uh, and learn about debt management, you know, I was so happy to help friends see how much ten extra ten dollars a day could come back their their interest rates um paying off um their loan sooner and you know i found that you know do you know actually how much is the average person average student would have in student loans oh i'm not quite sure but going based off of how much i owed in the short amount of time i can't imagine it's not it's a pretty decent number well, according to the U.S. debt clock, is about forty thousand per borrower right now, or per person that went to school. And you know that if you go with a lower number, let's say someone had thirty-two thousand dollars in debt, if they paid off in ten years, that could be about eight thousand dollars in interest. But just a hundred dollars extra a month, you could save yourself a couple thousand in interest paying off, and you could also pay off, get those loans out of your way. A couple of years sooner um but before, before learning about debt too i had no idea really about anything of course but interest rates are crazy and when we talked about from our previous episodes to my student debt it started off around twelve thousand, and it jumped all the way up to twenty five thousand because of interest rates that's crazy but yeah, it just makes you think too about when I first opened my credit card, I did the minimum monthly payment and I was like, whoa, what is this extra charge? And with the workshops that we attend, it taught me that you got to just be a little bit more and it'll, a little goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And that's right, because um, there are times where people get the wrong loan for school. You know, there are some pretty good loans offered by like federal and state. But I had a friend who ended up getting a loan from the bank and you know, personal loans, that's going to be, of course, a way higher interest rate. I think it was like 18% versus yeah. my student loans, like four, five, six percent So, you know, that's that was my second goal. But my third goal is I actually want to start helping my family more and really working with my sister on how we can 
replace some of our parents' income. Replace it where, you know, instead of them working, we are going to help them, maybe give them a paycheck every month so that, you know, we can contribute more. We can help them with better financial planning as a family. So we have peace of mind because, you know, everything's so expensive. It's not just the cost of living, but preparing for medical, preparing for other areas and just making sure that, hey, together, you know, finance may be something uncomfortable to talk about amongst families, but we want to make sure we, we try to work on that together so we can feel like we're in a better direction and spot. Yes. Definitely. And Brandon, all of your goals you have for this year are definitely attainable and just really inspiring as well because getting a car is a really big deal. Um, paying off debt is a really big deal as well. I know that's one of my big financial goals for this year, but retiring, you know, to help retire your parents is major. And that's something I really want to do this year as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am pregnant and I would love my mom to be a stay-at-home grandma and just, you know, have fun watching our baby. But <laughs> I know that comes along with me creating an extra income to help retire her. So Brandon, I think we're on the same page with our goals. It's aligning. And I definitely feel like with the tools that you have to share, it's definitely attainable. Awesome. Thank you. And congratulations. I'm so excited for you know, everything that's been happening the past few weeks with you and your and your family and loved ones. So so it's great that we could continue talking about this so that, you know, we all want to be in the right frame of mind. Cause I think a lot of us, we have the same common wants and there's people you want to help. Yes, definitely. So, you know, let's transition and let's talk about the environment today and why is it important for people to learn about finances? I think it is the lack of trust that people may have in the financial industry, you know, it may be hard for people to really take the time to understand, or even, you know, just we live in a world, a digital age where so many people have things to say. We have people who want to give you tips. We have people who want to give you financial advice. Maybe it's listening to your, not just parents, but like relatives, neighbors, coworkers, but who really has that industry experience and that maybe financial professional uh, licenses to help you understand, you know, the ins and outs of the industry. Yeah. Right. So I also, this, this goes along with like, when we talk about the financial industry before you would need a minimum as a requirement to work with someone to work with an advisor, mm -hmm. the advisors are usually older too. And, you know, I think you, you made a great point, high interest rates. And that's the thing where, you know, a lot of our debt is in high interest rates, but where are people saving? Yeah. Yeah. What, what percent? Yeah, no, I, that's very true. And going into transition of talking to different people and there are so many advice everywhere. I feel a lot of times people get confused with what is the right information, right? And it can with social media and even our circle of influence when it comes to friends and family, that could play a big deal on how we view our finances. Yeah. But I know, you know, there's kids who, you know, want to make a change. So yeah, share more about that. Mm -hmm. I think one of the first changes we could talk about is um, people who just want to talk about it more and communicate with family. You know, I think even even for my family, it, could, it still could be hard, but it's the transition and making the effort so that we can communicate with each other, know what's happening, know what needs to get done and plan together. Because, you know, rather than, you know, us feeling that we want to provide the best for our family, which is right, all of us want to do that. But to keep it from each other, you know, that's where we want to be able to know what do we have. Um, but, you know, if we're to talk about the people who wants to change, I think we are all we're looking for people like us, people who love to educate, who want to share with everyone, especially those who are all good people, right? They have a desire to win, positive, and yeah. they just simply want change. They simply want something better. Yeah. So let's talk about more about what people want and what what would people want 
other than change and all of that. What is the big why these days? Mm. So the whys would be, you know, there could be a few things like this, just being significant. You want to feel significant. You want to be able to maybe change a lifestyle. You know, we're living in an age where it's not just digital, but we're living in a lot of career ch changes. People are shifting. People are looking at different opportunities. And that's where people want to set our own hours. We want to be able to make money that we get to keep. And, you know, be able, again, what we talk about is giving the best for our family. And I think this totally relates to, like, you know, talking with you before about how you just want to set your own hours and feel that you had control over your schedule, right? Yes. And, you know, so what is it that we may be lacking or more so what are we missing in order to achieve these goals? So this would be a couple of things. First is I think it's just the visit, vision and direction. It's not to say that we are not goal setters and we don't aim for something, but we may be wanting more, but do we know exactly what do we want? Not knowing that, not just knowing, hey, I want a good retirement. This reminds me of like a study I did with a company, a local company. And I, I asked them, hey, let's just do a quick survey. You know, I want to make sure I can provide you guys um, an education that's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. So I asked them a questions. And one of the questions is, okay, do you guys know what, what you need for retirement? How much do you need for retirement? And the common answers was maybe a million dollars, I think a million dollars or just enough to live comfortably. And I was like, okay, but how do you, do you guys feel on track? And I was showing you this, right? That report. And do you remember what that number was? How, what percent felt they're on track? It was a hundred percent were felt that they weren't on track. They were unsure or they just did not feel they were on track. And, and you know, that's where, you know, we want to give people an idea of, okay, what number is good for our lifestyle? What kind of direction that we can give to others to be in an environment where they want, they could change together, they could see more, they could be that homeowner that they want to be. But, you know, there's a couple other things, self-confidence, time, money. You know, I, I come from a time, um, I come from growing in this industry where I had lack of confidence. You know, I'm a type of person who, even though I like talking to people, I really did not like crowds. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do you like crowds, Shayna? Do you like speaking in front of people before? I think it just depends. Um, I I don't hate it. I don't love it. But it's not the end of the world for me. I'm surprised you're saying that though, Rana, because I feel like you're a great public speaker. <laughs> and, I, and thank you. I, I think it's because of the willingness to always go out and that's and trying to do something that I may, may not be comfortable with. Um, some funny stories is like, you know, when I would, we have this, um, every year we would have a Christmas talent show and each family would perform something. And when I was a kid, you know, kids, they, they have the best confidence in the world. And I would sing whatever it is, even if it's not the language that I speak, <laughs> but I got older, I got so shy. I got nervous. Even in class presentations, I was like sweating. I was like, oh, okay. I got to get so nervous. Everyone's looking. <laughs> and then it, it just gets, just gets more hard. I'm right. Where, where does the lack of confidence come from? And it's very interesting that you're sharing all of this because I feel with all the tools that you have given right now, well, confidence is a big key to help attain the goals we want in life. Right. If if we believe it, then we could definitely achieve it. So it, yeah, it's very interesting with what you're sharing right now. Yeah, I think you know confidence is could relate to how do you feel just in your everyday life. Do you have that peace of mind? Sometimes confidence could come from or nervousness could come from just the lack or or the amount on your shoulder. Maybe it's like financial stress, for example. Um, we have a saying in our in one of our financial workshops where, you know, don't you want to have a peace of mind, have enough money on the side so that you're not darting through every opportunity that comes your way, that you're not, that you're not looking for something maybe desperately, 
but now you could have praise opportunities. You could be uh, more respectful. You could give yourself time and you're not worried every day or every night, right? We don't want to have those sleepless nights. Yeah, I I know how that feels too. I just remember before I found the financial literacy campaign that we're in, how stressful money can be. And I just remember when I was in that place thinking, I just want to get out of this situation. And I didn't know how and what I could do. But it's great that we're starting off the New Year's because what really helped me get to where I was at or to where I'm at now is goal setting. And that brings me to my next question. You know, what should we do and how should we stay committed? Because when you set a goal, I know we had a training a few weeks ago that I believe it was like January 12th or January 13th. It's actually called National Quitters Day because everyone who set up a New Year's resolution or a goal or plan, they quit by the 12th day of January, somewhere around that line. But how do we stay committed? Because I know financial goals, especially, this is something that it, it takes time and you see more results the longer you put your head in the game, right? So what should we do? So I have two things that people could do. The first one is, of course, it's writing your goals, but the the reasoning, the why, and that would be having an emotional reason, emotional goals. So I know we, with our, our colleagues, we spend a great amount of time working on emotional goals. And that's not just the classic SMART goals, but you of our writing down what do you want specifically when you want it but the reasoning why it will it will impact you and some examples would be let's say i want to have an i want to save for a rainy day right that's the most common goal that people have saving for a rainy day but why how much i want to save three months of my income so that I don't have to take out debt ever again. I don't have to go back to credit cards. Um, that I don't have to worry about food on my table. And something that matters to you, what relates to you. So that, hey, you know, I don't want this to ever happen again. And this is a reminder that, hey, I'm going to make sure I do this so I don't feel like this. And I'm going to maintain that lifestyle. And that's the same thing for, you know, I want to... Um, for me, I want to be able to give my parents some money, help them with retirement so that they don't work again. And they don't work again so that, you know, they're not going back, you know, working when they're, when they're at a time that they already did enough. You know, we, I, I, I see they did a lot um, and I want them to take some time for themselves. And I think a, a goal that we could all have, um, you know, even though we talk about saving money, and being efficient with your money, I think it's also good to travel the world together too, right? You know, I, <laughs> I want to travel the world, but you know, I want to make sure for me, I want to travel together as a family, make sure I can bring everyone so that we don't leave someone behind. And that's something that's really important to me. So that, you know, we want to experience the world together. Um, even though you can go out by yourself and maybe one of your other family members, but together, you know, we, we can see how much things change and feel happier. You start to also appreciate what you have too, and just having that better quality of life. So that's the first, the first one I would say people should do is, is writing down an emotional goal. Yeah. And emotional goals are very, it, it gives you that big why, right? I know for me, um, and going back to our goals, our personal goals for this year, my biggest why is the baby on the way. And, you know, providing for my family and making sure that I won't be put in a position where emotionally I don't want to feel. And that was before I set all those goals for myself. And that was before when I was walking in the rain to go to my job. And yeah, I really love what you're sharing because it's as simple as that. But a lot of times we don't do that. I and mean, it's very hard to follow if we don't write something down. So what, what else? What else can we do? So it's one thing to write it down, but you should also read it. And this also goes in the the part where you want to find a community that's going to be able to help you, help you not only remind you of your goals, but help you understand why you want them, help you find 
actionable ways to achieve them. And that's why, you know, I'm so proud to be a world system builder campaigner where we not only educate families and going for that 30 million families educated by 2030, but we have seen so much growth in the financial industry, you know, especially over COVID where, where people saw businesses closing, you know, our business, we grew from 300 financial centers to 600. And mm-hmm. since COVID has kind of died down, we also grow another hundred centers so that we can offer not just resources online, but in person, right? Have that connection with people. And, you know, I think it's so awesome that we could be part of such a larger purpose, finding a way that we can work with someone and also maybe finding that accountability partner where I say, you know, Shayna, I know you're one of my true accountability partners and you help me come to the office and we be able to help each other to stay on track on, okay, this is what we're going to do. We'll make sure we read our goals every day, take the time to feel your emotional goals, but you know, what are you doing? Hey, Shayna, what are you doing today? Have you been able to do these things so that you're on track for everything? And, you know, I love that we have that community together and that partnership so that we could help each other grow. Yes. And I agree. I love our campaign and I love the business that we're in. Because not only do we educate people on what to do, but we're educating ourselves on a daily basis. And we are creating that dream life that we want for ourselves in the smartest way possible. So going back to our financial goals for this year, Brandon, I know that you'll definitely achieve it. And where are you at right now? Do you feel like you're making those um, little changes to help reach your big goal for this year? Yes. So of course, I think at the end of the day, you want to make, you need to make more money so that you could also accomplish your goal was not just budgeting. So I, it's been good in that aspect, but also I see that, you know, I'm already doing what I can to start help my parents transition to that retirement. So, you know, contributing, giving some money and we're actually just, my sister and I just finalizing a plan so that we can make sure this keeps going through and my dad could officially transition this year, start making those small steps to start feeling healthier, feeling happier. So I already see some great steps in my, through my goals. And I'm so gra- pr- proud to be a part of a place where, you know, we promote that and we want to see each other achieve. Yes. And little steps equal big changes. So I'm really proud of you, Brandon. And thank you so much for having this very transparent conversation with me today. I know finances and goal setting Sometimes sometimes can be a very tricky topic, but I'm glad that you shared your own whys and how everyone else can help reach their financial goals. So thank you again so much for being on the show. Thank you, Shayna. Thank you for having me. It's, it's so great to kick off the new year together. Yes, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of you. But if you guys enjoyed this conversation, hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Sheila Park, a Gen Z, inspiring lives of liberties. Thank you.